Hey, welcome to another soda beers, Jack Barbecue. Tonight we're doing a one-year review on the Slow and Sear Kettle, and we also cooked two beautiful ribeye caps. Check them out. Hey, I'm Craig, man behind the cameras, Jack. Tonight, two nice ribeye caps being done on the Slow and Sear Kettle. Season them with Pit Patriots all-purpose seasoning, and hit just the outside ring with the Hickory Barbecue flavoring rub. So check out how we broke down for the ribeye caps. All right, so here's the cap that I broke down off that entire ribeye that we did. And it's just choice. And for me, the cap itself on choice is, is perfectly fine. Um, the, well, the marbling shows up even more is in the filet of that, of that choice ribeye. But since we used that for other pieces, I just have the cap here. Uh, cap actually came off pretty easy. Um, I know the prime caps, they sell it like Costco for 25 bucks a pound. I think I paid $11 a pound for this right now. So made my own, going to get a bunch of steaks out of this. So to me, it's just a big savings, and that's why I like to buy the whole thing. So um, I pinwheeled it, I tied it up with butcher's twine, and all I'm going to do is cut it kind of in between the, the, uh, the strings. I'll probably cut this one a little closer to the end because I'm not sure what's going to happen with that one. But again, that's the other thing about buying like the whole thing. Instead of just buying steaks at a higher price, all these little extra meats you can use either for ground, ground uh, beef or, um, like I said, with the cheese steaks we're doing. So... We use the whole thing, almost waste nothing except some of the hard fat. So I'm gonna slice this up quick and we'll uh, next up be on the grill. I know this knife is like overkill, but I just love cutting slices with it. So I'm gonna get some nice fat steaks out of this. So you can just see, like I said, I'm, when I get down to the end here, I'll show you a little bit better how it's gonna look. So that's kind of how the pinwheel goes. Um, we can see it there. I think Jack's not going to complain about me making a steak like that on, on one of these grills. So again, I'm going to cut this one a little bit closer to the string on this side because of the end. But man, let's look at the marbling in that and just the cap. Like I said, this is only choice. So beautiful marbling. Can't wait till we start cooking these things up. Um, probably see a different wardrobe change next time because again, going to be vacuum sealing these for now. Um, bringing them out later for other cooks, so uh, can't wait to show you what grill we cook these on, but we're, I know we're going to get some serious searing going on on the different grills, so uh, looking forward to it. Hey, part of this again is that to do the one-year review of the Slow and Sear Kettle. So watch it if we do a walk around and I'll narrow it a little bit, and we'll do a, re a final say on what we think after one year at the end. All right, so we're going to give you a walk around, as you can see. I use the grill. Grill gets used pretty hard, probably at least once a week, and that's just because I have a lot of other grills here. So, uh, um, but still, probably my favorite grill to smoke on. Just to me, it gets the best color. Um, just like using it. The additions they did to it with the probe hole, which is great. You know, love that feature. The ash bucket. I like the way that works. You can see inside here. Like I said, it gets used. Um, used hard. Always have the slow and sear usually in there, except when I have the planche in, then I sometimes do some things different. And my other, one of my other favorite features is the smoke hole. That one there we do low and slow, low and slow. I have the main, uh, main vent closed, just the smoke hole, three quarters open, and the uh, lid maybe three quarters. That holds at 250 for as long as you want it. So. One of the things I love, one of the best things with the SNS is it just makes grilling simpler. So that's what I like about this so much. All right, let's get these caps on the grill. Just gonna put them on here, kind of do our normal, let them get to about um, 80 degrees, flip them, and they get to about 110, we'll pull them off and get this thing cranking up. All right, we'll see you in a little bit. All right, so one hit a little bit above 80, the other one's still climbing there. So we're just gonna turn them, see where we are, uh, let them go for a little bit longer. Like I said, we always like to go to about 110, maybe 105, pull them off, and then we're gonna go for a nice hard sear. 
Uh, so when I just went just past 110, so we're gonna pull them off now. Um, I did take some other readings just to make sure where we're at. Let me get this out of your way so you can see here. All right, we're gonna uh, let these rest. We're gonna get things fired up here to get a good sear, and we'll uh, bring you back. All right, time to get these seared. So we got a real nice hot fire going. I just turned the grill, it got the hottest part off the grill there. We're gonna go the minute, two times each side. All right, there's a minute. Looking good. Do another minute. There we go, one more minute. Here's looking good. One more minute. All right, last minute. Well, that's got a nice hard sear there. This is gonna be good. All right, gonna bring them off. Boy. It's a great looking sear. See you on the cutting board. As always, cheers. So here we are into the cook. Kind of you know, showed you, we did ribeye caps, but we did a one year review on the S&S kettle. And honestly, the I've had another kettle before, and previous cooks you saw in our other kettle. I really have no complaints about that, and I think it's just another step above what my other kettle was. And the main reason was the smoke hole. I love that smoke hole for anything low and slow. You have three quarters of that, three quarters of the top vent, to, for me, 250 all day long. It's perfect. Um, the temperature probes, so like I'm not one to make um, modifications to my grills. That's other people into that, I'm not. I wanna come out and cook. As you see, like I said, I clean them up, keep them to a point, but I use them. So I'm not worried about how shiny they are. I just wanna know how good they cook. Um, the, I like the way the basket works, a little bit easier to work for me on that. If I had any complaints, the table itself is smaller than my other one, but I don't have complaints about that because I turn that down and I have less footprint because I have, as my wife would mention, too many grills in my back patio. So anyone that saves me a little bit of space is a good thing. Um, the other thing is it's got a rough surface, which is fantastic for nothing to move. A little bit harder to keep clean, but again, I can't really complain about the way that grill works. Um, I know people say, well, you're an affiliate, so you're gonna say that. No, we, everything else with this, bought it slow and sear the plancha all those extra items you know we buy on our own so uh, we're just happy to use products that are good here's the end with the the ribeye cap so we showed you how we broke that down um, something I've been doing more of just because it's a better price get you know a little bit better you kind of get what you want from these things so we seasoned it about four hours ago with pit Patriots all Amer all purpose seasoning and then I just did the outside ring with the hickory barbecue rub so I'm interested to see how that flavor went. I realized I didn't cut the string off before I cut in this, but hopefully our, our new sharp knives are gonna cut right through that, but we'll see what happens. But I uh, took it to about 80, flipped it, got to a 110, let the fire get super hot, seared it a minute aside two times. Um, got a really nice hard sear on here, so I'm looking forward to cutting into this. So let's see what we got here. Didn't even know that string was there. That's a nice looking medium rare. So let's now take a bite here. I gotta find that piece of string where I'll be uh, having that as part of my meal. There it is. Hmm. Wow. That sear is perfect. That's one other thing that gets so hot with that slow and sear in there. The rub, this little, the hickory, let's say anybody heat on it, but it's got a little kick to it, which is nice. And the all-purpose, just kind of, just a nice blend of, of flavors. Jack's gonna be happy on this one. Like I said, got a nice hard sear on it. This is gonna be a good meal tonight. So hopefully like we're seeing, subscribe to the channel, click no, get notifications uh, when you click the little bell, and we'll see you next time.